Hi there, I'm Ms. Julie and today's story is called Anansi and the Snake. Now, if you don't know who Anansi is, let me tell you, he is a character from West African folklore. And sometimes Anansi is a snake and sometimes he's a man and sometimes he's this odd combination of the two. Now, Anansi is not a goody two-shoes hero. No, Anansi is cunning and he's a trickster and he's lazy and if he's not falling asleep he's probably playing some kind of trick on the other animals of the forest. Well a long time ago the king of the forest was Tiger. And tiger had things named after him. He had like the tiger lilies and the tiger moths but the thing he was most proud of were the tiger stories. All the other animals, when they would get together, they would say things like, who is the strongest in the forest? Or who is the bravest in the forest? And everybody would say, tiger, tiger is. And then every once in a while, somebody would say, and who is the weakest in the forest? And they would all say together, Anansi, Anansi is. Well, Anansi got sick and tired of this, and he decided he was going to do something about it. So one day he was out and he walked up to Tiger and he bowed and said, Tiger, you have so much. Can you just give me one little thing? Now, normally Tiger would not be bothered with such an insignificant speck as a Anansi the spider, but Tiger was kind of curious. So he said, well, Anansi, what is it you would like? And Anansi said, oh, Tiger, you have so much. Could, could I just have the stories? I'd like them to be called Anansi stories. Well, the stories were Tiger's favorite thing and he had absolutely no intention of letting Anansi have them. But he was up for a little good joke. So he said, yeah, all right, Anansi. You can call the stories Anansi stories or whatever else you want. All you have to do is one little thing for me. Well, Anansi kind of gulped and said, um, what would you like me to do for you, Tiger? And Tiger said, oh, easy. All you have to do is capture snake. Well, it's a good thing Anansi had eight legs because I think four of them probably crumbled underneath him when he heard that. You see, snake of the jungle is not like your common garden snake. Oh no, snake of the jungle is big. I mean, really big. And Anansi, well, Anansi was small, very small, but Anansi really wanted those stories, so he said, okay, Tiger, I'll do it. I will capture Snake by the end of the week. And all, some of the other animals were listening and they just all started laughing. And Anansi, he started walking back to his house, worried, but thinking. That was Monday. Now the next day, Anansi went to the trail that Snake usually went down and he found a big vine and he made a noose out of the vine and he laid that noose down on the path and he put a bunch of luscious berries in the middle. And then he took the vine and he went behind a tree hanging onto the end so that when Snake came, he would be able to pull that vine around Snake's neck. Well, Snake came along, but he saw the noose and he saw the vine and even though his mouth was just watering from those berries, he knew what he had to do. So he laid his body on the vine, ate the berries, and Anansi, even though he was tugging and tugging, that snake weighed too much and he couldn't do anything with the noose and the snake went off on his way. Next day, Anansi went further up the trail and this time he dug a big hole in the ground and he got this luscious bunch of bananas and he put the bananas inside the hole. And then he greased the sides of the hole so that when a snake would see those bananas 
and he would go into the hole to get him, he would just slide right in and not be able to get out. Well, Snake came along and his mouth started watering when he saw those bananas, but he also noticed that the sides of the hole were all greasy. So he took his tail and he wrapped it around a tree, stuck his head into the hole, ate the bananas, and as he came up, if snakes would have had lips, he would have been licking them. He untied his tail and then he slithered back off down the path. And Anansi, well, there was nothing he could do. Next day, Anansi went further up the trail. And this time he had a new kind of idea. So this time he built a cage and he used sticks and he made the cage so that the sticks were far enough apart that Snake could get in, but that if he ate something, he would be too fat and he wouldn't be able to get out of the cage. And on one side, he had a door, and then on three sides, he had these walls. Well, after he built the cage, he put some ripe melons in the cage. And a pig came along and saw the melons, and the pig went in the cage to start eating the melons, and Anansi, he closed the door to the cave. And then Snake came along, and Snake saw the melon and saw the pig. And the pig saw the snake, and he went crazy, and he broke that cage all apart, and he ran off into the forest before Snake's mouth could even water. And Nancy was like, oh, stupid pig, didn't even know what it wanted. I ruined my whole plan. Uh, next day, it's Friday, end of the week, and Anansi still had not caught the snake. So Anansi went over to Snake's house and he was sitting on the front steps in front of Snake's house and looking kind of sad and dejected. And Snake came out and said, Anansi, what are you doing here? You've been trying to catch me all week and now you're here sitting on my front porch? And Anansi said to the snake, yes, yeah, Snake, you're right. I was trying to catch you all week, but there was a really good reason for it. Snake said, what's that? And Anansi said, well, I'm not sure I should tell you because I don't want to get all the other animals in trouble. And Snake said, tell me what? And he said, well, if you insist, the other animals, they think that you think that you are the longest thing in the forest and that you're God's gift to longness and that you think you're the longest, but really you're not even longer than the shortest bamboo stick. Well, this got Snake kind of mad. And he said, Nancy, you go cut down the longest stick there is, the longest bamboo you can find. And we'll measure me up against that. And I'll show those other animals. So Anansi, he cut down the longest bamboo stick that he could find and he laid it on the ground. And then the snake laid down next to the vine and he said, See, Anansi, you get those other animals. You show them. I'm longer than this bamboo stick. And Anansi, well, he said, well, Snake, um, you look longer. I'll give you that. But, you know, I'm just a little tiny spider. So how do I know that when I run up to where your head is, you aren't scooting up to make it look like you're longer than the pole? And when I go down to where your tail is, you aren't backing up to make it look like you're shorter, you're longer than the pole. And Snake said, well, Anansi, all right, tie my tail to the pole. So Anansi took some vine and tied Snake's tail to the pole. And then Anansi said, okay, Snake, now you need to stretch. You need to stretch like you have never stretched before. You need to stretch until your eyes are closed. And so Snake, he started to stretch. And he started to stretch and he stretched until his eyes closed. And Anansi grabs a vine and he tied Snake's head to that pole. And then he tied Snake's middle to that pole. And all the other animals who'd been around watching couldn't believe their eyes. Anansi had just captured Snake. 
From that day forward, all the stories in the forest were called Anansi stories. The end.